Alright everyone, so let's get started with our last uh, module on module four, uh, module five, interset connectivity, and we will talk about lesson three, uh, which is express route. So it's been some time since I post my last video, so it's uh, I still try to do one videos per week. Uh, uh, however, I mentioned last time, right? So my my daughter came back, so I have a lot of time spending on her, uh, with her. So. Uh, not too much time on you know doing the demos and the recordings and everything but still i will try to do one per week uh, so hopefully finish this within another uh two months hopefully yeah so uh express route is one of the thing that's in assure it's i don't i won't say it's widely used but because people have a misunderstanding on express route because uh, most people think it's fast and secure so secure yes but fast not necessarily so that's the thing, because some people I, I do find they, they said, okay, Rob and I, I, I we we purchase Express Route. It's really expensive, but we didn't find it's much faster compared to our regular connections. And so uh, uh, we have to do some uh, definition first for uh, for the Express Route first, right? Like our Euro session. So the Azure Express Route, it's it lets you it lets you uh, extend your on-premises network into the a Microsoft Azure Cloud over a dedicated private connection, uh, which is facilitated by a connectivity provider, which is, for, for example, here is China Telecom. You might have Verizon, AT&T. So with this express route, you can establish a connection to Microsoft Cloud services uh, like the Azure Office 365 and CRM Online. So it's not necessarily it's Azure. So some of the features or benefits uh, when you, ha you have when you are connecting Azure, sir, uh, make your connection fast. That's what they say, but not necessarily. Remember, so it's reliable and private. So reliable and private, yes. So use the Azure Express route to create, you know, private connections between the Azure data center and infrastructure on your premises, or you know, any environment you have. The Express route connections don't go over the public internet. Remember, it doesn't go to the public internet, and which offers more reliability, you know, fast speeds and everything. So over, also lower latency than typical internet connection. Those are the, what they, uh, they claim. So in some cases, using the express route connections to transfer data between your on-premises system and Azure can give you a significant cost benefit. Uh, that's true. So, and with this express route uh, connection to Azure at the uh, express route location, which is a data center, such as the exchange providing facility or directly connect to Azure from your existing WAN network, such as uh, you know MPRS VPN provided by uh, network service provider. Uh, so here, what you must know is uh, uh, typically when we do a network assessment or network planning for a customer, doesn't matter when they're purchasing Azure or Office 55, we always say that uh, if you can access internet, then you can access Microsoft Azure or Office 55. So that's typically is the case because if you can access, you know, uh, you can. But however, it's not necessary because you, you have to understand the Azure is not Internet. There are two separate things. So the, the Internet we use is where you find Google, and, you know, YouTube and Facebook and everything else. But Azure itself has its own network. Uh, which Microsoft claims it's the third largest network in the world. So the first one might be the Internet itself. The second one, I don't know, might be Google. So that's why they say that they are the third largest. Or the, the second one might be Amazon. So I, I'm not sure that. Uh, so that, that's the thing. So you have to connect to Internet first. Then the Internet will route you to the closest data center you have. For example, here I'm located in Shanghai, right? So when I do the connection, uh, so... Uh, let me just jump into the second slide so you know, where you have this map for easier for me to illustrate. Uh, so for example here, uh, Shanghai and Beijing, right? So I have, I'm here located in Shanghai. So when I connect to Azure, you see me connecting, right? So it routes me uh, to the clock data center here. But here, it, for example, it will not be Shanghai because it's operated by 21 Varanet, but mine is a global one. So it might route me to Hong Kong or it might route me to Japan East so it depends on what I'm accessing. But typically, so it routes you the closest, uh, closest. But for Office 5 it's a different thing because your data is scattered, right? So the, the SAS keep your data is scattered not in one location, but in different locations. Microsoft sometimes move your data to a different location. They use one data center to do some calculation or uh, algorithm to calculate something. I'm not sure. So they do do that. So. You have to get on the public internet first, then to get on the Microsoft 
Azure network. But worldwide, Microsoft used the dark fiber to connect their data center, so you do have fast connections. So the purpose of an express route is you don't have to go to the public internet now. You have just directly to the Microsoft uh, Azure network. So you route over the, uh, uh, for example, China Telecom or Verizon. But uh, keep in mind is you have to get on the China Telecom or Verizon first, right? But they, from there, they have a dedicated line to the Azure network. Uh, uh, Microsoft has done the pairing with m pretty much all the majority, the largest uh, network you know, there is listed there. So I don't know, there's a hundred something list. You can look for the Azure pairing. So that let you know, We you can check, okay, if I subscribe to Verizon, is Verizon subscribed to or paired with Microsoft Azure yet? So you can check that. Once they done the pairing, so you have to have a reliable and fast connection. And I said one thing before that it's not the guaranteed you, you are fast. So that's one thing. So within, if you're located in the US and uh, typically within US itself, uh, uh, especially within the uh, East US or Central US, if your pain to the uh, Azure data center is less than, uh, let's say 200 milliseconds. So that's within their uh, SLA. So Microsoft do say, we don't guarantee like you have a 10 milliseconds connection. Uh, latency no they don't guarantee that but below 200 milliseconds that's expected anywhere else outside the us they don't guarantee so it's even you have 500 milliseconds latency it's expected but if you have like two seconds latency okay that's a, a little too much but that's something you have to know first so express route doesn't mean fast connection but if you are like really close to the data center then probably you have really fast connection All right so and you have to connect to one of the data centers close to you. I can now say, I'm in Shanghai. I want to download an express route to, uh, uh, for example, the central US or, uh, for example, Australia. So that's far from me, right? I, I, I can get a fast connection to Hong Kong or Japan. So the, the fiber probably just go down from there. Okay, that's the basic logic you have to know. All right, so, uh, um, yeah, so the express route is supported across all the Azure regions and locations. So even you are the government or you know Germany or 24 internet, you have express route. Don't worry. The uh, the the map here provides a list of Azure regions and express route locations. If you remember in the first module or I think it's the second one we have, right? The first one's the course introduction. So the Azure is uh, locating uh, across 54 regions and 140. Uh, countries, right? Something like that. So the express route locations refer to those where Microsoft peers with those uh, uh, service providers. So you will have the access to your service across all regions within a geographic location uh, region. If you are connected to at the uh, least one uh, express route location with the uh, with that region. So some of the benefits: it's uh, across on-premise connectivity with express uh, express route global reach. So you can enable Express Route Global Reach to exchange data across your on-premises sites by connecting your Express Route circuits. It does call the Express Route circuits if you go to Azure to uh, to purchase one. So it doesn't just call Express Routes. So for example, you, if you have a private data center in California, uh, connect to Express Route in Silicon Valley, and another private data center in Texas, connect to Express Route in Dallas. With the uh, Express Route Global Reach, you can connect your private data centers together through two Express Route circuits, and your cross data center traffic will transverse through Microsoft Network. And the other benefit is um, the bandwidth option. You can purchase Express Route circuits for a wide range of bandwidth, from 50 megabytes per second to 10 gigabytes per second. And be sure to check with your connectivity provider determining the bandwidth they support. Uh, of course, it's you know the the more bandwidth you have, it's, just, it's more expensive. We, uh, I'm gonna show you a, a page later, which is the Azure Express Route uh, pricing, and mo I'm also gonna include this link in the uh, uh, video description below, so you can just click. Another benefits are the flexible billing modules. You can pick a billing mod module that works best for you. Choose between the uh, billing modules. You know, like uh, there are three. Uh, I think you know uh, there are two. Uh, three, yes, unlimited, metered, and premium. So I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, there are three. So unlimited. So the billing is based on the monthly fee. So all inbound, outbound data transfer is included in the fee of charge. The meter data is based on the monthly fee. So on inbound transfer is free, and outbound data transfer is charged per gigabyte of data transfer. 
and the second one is the premium add-on. So this add-on includes increased routing table limits, increased the number of VNets and global connectivity, and a connection to Office 365 and the Dynamics 365, all those. So it's like how your subscription is chart, right? You have this pay-as-you-go, and you have the, uh, 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 I think it's enterprise plan, right? So you have also have the, uh, like, students or MSDN uh, benefits, like they are the allowance-free one. And we're going to talk about the Express Route connections. So there were three, right? The first one is Cloud Exchange co-location. So if you are co-located in a facility with a Cloud Exchange, you can order virtual cross-connection to Microsoft Cloud through the co-location provider's Ethernet Exchange. And the co-location providers can offer either layer two cross-connections or uh, manage layer three cross-connection between your infrastructure in the co-location facility and Microsoft Cloud. The second one is point-to-point -point Ethernet connection. So you can connect your on-premise data centers, your offices, your whatever branches you have to the Microsoft Cloud through point-to-point -point Ethernet links. The point-to-point -point Ethernet provides the uh, provider can offer layer two connections or manage layer three, same as the uh, cloud exchange co-location. And any to any, so networks also as the IP VPN, you can integrate your uh, WAN with the Microsoft Cloud, IP VPN providers, typically the MLPS VPN, offer any to any connectivity between your branch office and data centers. And the Microsoft Cloud can be interconnected to your WAN to make it look like uh, any other branch office. So the WAN providers typically offer the managed layer three connectivity. And the coexisting side to side and express route. So the express route itself is a direct private connection, as we said, to your local office uh, from your Microsoft service, including Azure. So the side to side VPN traffic travels encrypted over the public internet. And being able to configure side to side VPN and express route connections for the same virtual network has several benefits or advantage, you can configure a site to site VPN as a secure fail overpass to access route over uh, or use the site to site VPN to connect to signs that are not part of your network, but that are, that are connect through express route. So notice that the configuration requires two virtual network gateways for the same virtual network. So one using the gateway type VPN and the other using the gateway type express route here. And uh, I do have a question before for some of my Office 25 customers. They said we have the Express Route and we want to move data, which is migration to the uh, uh, Exchange Online or SharePoint OneDrive so, or Microsoft Teams, it's a new thing. So they ask like, we have Express Route, can we uh, use that to, to migrate the data? Because they say we, we have the subscription of 10 gigabytes, but we have the, the, the highest one. So can we move data faster uh, that way? So uh, this is uh, something you have to understand. So that's a different thing. Uh, you have to move data up the traditional way, which is go to your uh, 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 internet provider first, a service provider, then to the Azure network. So that throughput bandwidth is what you have. It's not Express Route itself. Uh, why is that? It's because the express route is connected to the data center which you which you selected, right? But your data is not with necessarily within that. And even your data is within the same region, it's scattered differently. So it's structured differently in the data center. For example, SharePoint. So SharePoint, it's uh, uh, you guys, it's all SharePoint side, SharePoint tenant. You have your blob storage there, but you cannot access the blob blob storage from your Azure itself, right? You cannot see that. There is a way they do provide the APIs you, you, where we can, you know get some, uh, like, I don't know, the features, the details of that blob storage, but you can move, no, you cannot move data into the blob itself because the, the migration itself, it's, uh, they migrate all your unstructured, uh, your blob data, sorry, I'm sorry, the on-premise file share or SharePoint data into the blob storage, which is under the SharePoint tenant. Then from there, they push the data, uh, which that, that part is they call it staging. And the second part is they, they move the data into the, uh, SharePoint online services. So there's a two part, which doesn't leverage the express route. All right, this is something you have to know first, but there's an option if you want to do that fast and you have a lot of data, which we're gonna cover in module 10. Uh, so you can use the data box, right? It's, you can migrate a huge amount of data. You just ship them to them to, you purchase the data box from Microsoft and you put your data inside, it's put on BitLocker. So it's encrypted and you ship that to Microsoft data center. They just connect the 
I don't know, uh, connect the line there so it's uploading to your uh, uh, SharePoint or Exchange. So you have a way. So before it's called drive shaping, now it's called data box. So this little out, uh, out of our scope here, we just uh, mentioned this. So let's go over to Azure. So uh, uh, well, it's Google. So uh, you can hear. So from here, you can just search Express Route Circuits. Remember, it's not just Express Route, it's Circuit. You can add an Express Route. So I'm not going to add one here because it's really expensive uh, from my end. So uh, I'm not really going to add it. But there is something you have to know. Which is Google is this one? Uh, it's strange. I should be able to. Uh, did that connect my VPN? No. Okay. Why it's Google though? So anyway, uh, here, yeah. So here is where you are connect your, create your uh, Express route, right? You give it a name, provider. So, so these are the one. Also, this is one that's done the pairing with the, uh, uh, with the Azure, uh, with Microsoft under Azure. So you can see TNT, right? So uh, all the other service you have is the, let me see if uh, the SK Telecom is here. Uh, no, they're all okay. SoftBank, you do have SoftBank, so you can do the pairing from here. And let's say we just select the. Uh, which one we select? Let's see. Let's see, it's AT and T, right? So pairing location, so Silicon Valley and uh, Washington D.C., right? So we can select Silicon Valley bandwidth. You can see there is the option from 50 to 10 gigabytes. So 10 gigabytes. So SKU, you can read all this, uh, you know, uh, on yourself for billing metered or un unlimited. So that's your choice. Your subscription resource group choose one location. And just create. So that will create this for you. All right. So don't worry too much about this. It won't be like they ask three questions just on the exam. So maximum they're gonna ask one on the exam and very theoretical, not really hands-on. So you don't have to worry too much. All right. So uh, look like this is not not gonna low, but this is the pricing for the Azure Express route. We're gonna just uh, put this in the uh, video description. You can just click. So I don't have my VPN connected. At this moment, so for for some reason, so I uh, don't have to worry. Okay, so we're gonna see you in uh, module six next week, hopefully, if my daughter is being docile. <laughs>